welcome to episode 61. I got Kyle Turner in the house. What's up? Hey, man. What's up? How hey, you man. doing, man? Good. Yeah, good Can to you talk let... to you. Again. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. We had some difficulties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had some mic difficulties. <laughs> Can you let the listeners and audiences know a little bit about yourself before Absolutely. we get started? Yeah, for sure. So um, I like way back in the day, I used to make music, but now I'm actually a photographer. So what happened was I went to graphic design school. I got into photography um, and then basically started like a mini production company. So now what I do is photography and video for big brands and stuff like that. So that's currently what I do. I do a little bit of like social media marketing for some clients as well, but mostly right now it's like production. So helping brands create um, commercial quality videos for like social media, their website, things like that, you know? Amazing. Amazing. No, what happened? What happened? This is not good. Is, is my is my video okay? Yeah, yeah, it's okay now. Okay, I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, diving straight in. Yeah. Uh, memory lane, let's go down memory lane and talk about your little bit of struggles and hardships growing up in your childhood. Yeah, sure. So, um, when I was growing up, uh, I like I always was a creative person. So yeah. uh, my brother used to make music and I would help him make music. And whenever we were doing that, I would do things like I would help him make an album cover or I would help him make a music video or we would take photos on these like crappy little digital cameras. Yeah. And so that was kind of like my introduction into creative side of things. And I remember when I was in high school, all these kids were like, I want to be an accountant and I want to be, uh, you know, a lawyer and I want to be this. And I'm like, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, I would be so bored. Like it would just like, you know what I mean? So it kind of confused me why, why other people wanted to do that. And they sound excited about it, but there's nothing about it to me that was personally exciting. Like, I remember this girl I was talking to was like, she's like, Oh, like, I want to be an accountant. Her mom's an accountant. Her dad's an accountant. And like, now I don't have anything against accountants, but at the time I'm like, why the hell? Like, it just doesn't make sense how you're young. <laughs> You're young, you're like, you're 17 years old and your dream is to be an accountant. Like, I don't know, it just, I couldn't see the excitement in it. So I always wanted to be a creative person. And I remember um, I was like, I didn't really know anybody else who wanted to do what I wanted to do, which was yeah. like creative stuff and whatever. So when I went to college, I was actually making music. I was, uh, there was a radio club at the college and I was like DJing and all this stuff. And I just oh, remember nice. like, I got into uh, I got into graphic design school because I wanted to go into like a creative field. And I just remember like being in graphic design school and being like, dang, I, I'm in graphic design, which should be a creative field. And all these people are still like bots. Like nobody wants to have like fun and like do creative stuff. Everybody was like, OK, the teacher tells us this. We're going to do this to a T. And by the end, they just wanted to get a nine to five. And for me, I was like, no, like I want to be like the biggest graphic designer in the world they're like I want to do something fun and exciting like I want to go to New York City and be a graphic designer and like do all this stuff like I I wanted to take it to the next level and I remember everybody around me was just like they didn't even know what they wanted to do like a lot of people when they graduated graphic design they were like they went to university to get another graphic design oh, wow. <laughs> what the hell bro because in uh where I grew up in Montreal it was like uh we have college and then university so it's three oh, years okay. and then you could do like your typical university degree so I remember we finished college, like it's literally a, uh, what's it called? It's like a, a trade program or whatever. Like you, you get a degree yeah. going to graphic design school. And then they went to university after I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me. So I just remember feeling like very alone and like nobody else thinks like this. And it was like difficult. I had to find my own friend group and like find people who were, uh, you know, also creative and also into business. Cause Obviously, like being creative is one thing, but wanting to do well in life as a business person for me is another thing. And I just remember like there's people I knew who were like, OK, not making money doing photo shoots or like, OK, doing a nine to five where they're only making 30K a year. And I'm like, I can't do that. Like I, I yeah. want to have a fun, exciting life and do fun things. And so um, after college, I basically went like full in with my business and started working with brands pretty much right away. Like I was just reaching out to brands and started working with brands right away. Um, and it was a bit of a bumpy road. There wasn't like, like, I wouldn't say that I was full time uh, until like my second year into it, which, which is actually pretty fast now that I think about it. But like two years when I was like 18 or 19 years old felt like forever. You know what oh, I mean? Wow. I'm like, that young, eh? Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
so yeah and that was basically uh that was the start of it it was like there's a lot of times where I was like I was like dang bro like I'm the only one doing this I don't know anybody else who's doing this in Montreal there's a lot of creative people but like business in Montreal is so different right it's very it's like European style it's it's slow yeah yeah yeah. like in Toronto it's fast it's like yo I want to build like a massive company I want to sell a company I want to do this like it's bigger right but in Montreal it's like oh I just want to have a little boutique like you know tiny little (laughs) um I just remember like constantly being like, dang, I feel so alone, like in the sense that nobody wants to do the things that I want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what was your like the limiting beliefs or internal struggles during those phases of hardships and that's, challenge? That's a good question. Um, I've always been someone, I mean, I did have limiting beliefs for sure, but I, I always was someone who was very like, ever since I was young, I was like, oh, I'm going to be the best. Like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be like, like, I'm going to do the best. I'm going to be a millionaire. Like, I'm going to be like, you know what I mean? Like, I always thought like that. So I didn't have beliefs in terms of what's possible. Even now, I still think like anything is possible as long as the working type thing. Um, But at the time, I would say that I, like, one of the limiting, limiting beliefs I had was that, oh, I remember I was telling one of my uh, one of my close friends, he was like a mentor to me because he was a little bit older and he was a client of mine at the same time. And I remember just talking to him and I'm like, I can't wait till like clients pay me like a thousand dollars for a photo shoot. Cause at the time I was charging like a hundred, 200. Mm. And, um, and I was like, Oh, I can't wait to like charge, charge a thousand dollars for a photo shoot for like a personal photo shoot. Not even. Yeah, with of a course. Person. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, that's possible, bro. Like why think like he's like in New York city, people charge $3,000 for like a branding photo shoot. And I'm like, I'm like, dang, bro. And literally last year, I charged someone three thousand dollars for a photo shoot, for a branding photo shoot that um, they wanted to do. And it was like a f- full circle moment where I was like, oh, because at the time I didn't know, right? I didn't know like, how am I gonna move out of my out of my family's place? How am I gonna move to Toronto? Rent is crazy in Toronto. How am I gonna, um, you know, charge clients this amount? I had it wasn't necessarily limiting beliefs, but like I just didn't know how. I was like, how the heck am I gonna do this? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. So from the child, from young, you didn't really have those kind of, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. It was always. Yeah, it was. I've always been like, because when I was really young, I used to listen to like 50 Cent and stuff like that. And my brother and I would listen to him and we were just like, oh, like we could be like him. Like we're young. We have so much time to like get to that level type thing, you know? So I just remember listening to that kind of music. My brother would make that kind of music. And so I was making beats and DJing and all this stuff. To yeah. Have. And um, I just remember thinking in my head, I'm like, yeah, it's 100% possible. Like, my my mother was also very like, you can do it, you can do it. I feel like a lot of people's parents are like that. Not all of them, obviously, but like a lot of people will be like, you can do what you put your mind to. Um, but so I don't think that that was like the only thing that made me think that way. Because I know a lot of friends who like their parents say like, oh, you can do anything you put your mind to. But like, they don't actually go out and try and do it. So yeah. I, I feel like I was just... I think I'm just very excited and like creative and and like I'm I'm an explorer at heart in the sense that like I remember I was in high school and I was just like I don't want to stay in Montreal I don't want to stay in Canada like I want to go see the world and like do all this stuff you know what I mean so I remember like I just think it's it like my mindset is more so I want to do everything that I can in life or at least try like I want to go and like you know do all these like exciting things and like create funny stories and interesting stories and like so when yeah. things happen to my life I'm like I'm like oh this just adds on to the story like this is a new yeah thing. this is a journey all my friends and I'll be like oh like this thing just happened and like you know like I, whenever something interesting happens or like unique I'm like that's the stuff that I like you know yeah it just goes to show like your imagination is your limit so if you have a high like it, it just shows you like you're living proof I can see <laughs> yeah literally literally yeah man I, I think I, I think like to me I believe that um I think a lot of people could be it doesn't even have to be a lot right but like a little yeah. bit more um a little bit more creative when it comes to what they want to do you know what I mean like for example I know a lot of people would be like my mother for example I would ask her I'd be like if you could live anywhere in the world where would you live and she's like oh I would love to live in like this part of Montreal and I'm like I don't know if she understood the question <laughs> properly or like if she <laughs> like that area because like i i know I've, I've been to more countries than her but she's also traveled like a little bit like she she's from she's originally from england and she's been to like um she's been to like south america and like the caribbean and stuff like that and the u.s so i know she's like traveled a little bit 
So I'm like, I'm like, how could you want to live in Montreal? And it's not that, that there's anything bad about Montreal, but like, if you could live anywhere, you're telling yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So that was like interesting to me. So I do feel like to a certain extent, people it doesn't even have to be a lot. I just feel like people could be like, you know what? Um, yeah, I might have a job or something like that, but I want to start charity or, um, you know, I want to start this small business or like, I want to uh, start a podcast. Like anything that's just like a little yeah. bit than normal. I think that that makes the world a better place because then we have like fun things in life and people could share and experience new things and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. That's the, my aim. And then just ex sharing experiences and having a conversation and um, seeing where, where it goes. And right. what was the initial conversation or like, that moment where you knew you wanted to be a business person and uh, on top of the art. Yeah. Side. I would say that like, um, you mean business per person or like creative, uh, creative? Both. Like when you wanted to have that entrepreneur mindset. Yeah. Um, hmm, good question. Uh, <laughs> so like when I was younger and I was yeah. like making music and stuff like that, um, I knew that I could like sell beats. So like when I would make beats, I'm like, oh yeah, like I could sell beats for a living. Like that's like one of the things that I thought, you know? So, um, so that was like the first thing where I was like, even before that, I was like, oh, I'll be like, me and my brother will be like famous rappers or like, I'll be, <laughs> be yeah, like yeah. a rapper. And like, that's kind of what I thought. So, so that was like, I, I knew that I could um, like make money by not having a job. But then after that, uh, uh, what happened was I was selling beats in high school and this dude hit me up. He's like, Hey, like, I want to buy 10 beats from you. And usually a, a beat, like in the beat industry, if you're selling an exclusive license, which is like, you could sell this, you could do whatever oh, you okay. want. Thing, usually that would be pretty high up. You're talking about like 500, a thousand for like low key people. And then oh, wow. you're, you're talking like way more for like bigger producers to charge like a hundred thousand or more sometimes for these kind of beats. Right? If I'm not mistaken. Empire state of mind sold for like, a hundred thousand or a million or something crazy i don't remember what it was but Jeez. by jay-z apparently that beat sold for a lot i don't know if that's true but yeah <laughs> so in my head i was like i was like okay so this guy's coming to me he wants beats so i sold like 10 beats for like a thousand dollars now the first a thousand dollars i made i think i was like 16 years old and i was like wow. I finally had like the thousand dollars in my hand i'm like I'm like, yo, like, this is real. Like, I hear it all the time. Like, oh, Kyle, you should sell beats. Or like, or like people sell beats and they make a living selling beats. But I remember just being like, when I finally had like money in my hand and I sold like a couple beats before that for like a hundred, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. My first thousand dollars, I was like, I was like, wait, this is cool. <laughs> and back in they, those days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 16, like I, I was, I mean, now that I think about it, like, it felt like I was old back then because, like, 16 is, like, you know, older teenagers. But I was actually, like, really young when I think about it, like, doing that at 16. Um, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, to end off our segment, what would you say, in your own words, what limitless for being, having that mindset means to you? Being, what, being limitless? Has, yeah. Um, hmm, good question. Uh, I think being limitless is telling, like, for me, it has a lot to do with internal dialogue, right? So for me, it's kind of like, do I stop myself from doing things before, like premature, like stop myself before it could even come into fruition in my brain? Like, I feel like our brain a lot of the times can come up with solutions to certain things. Um, there's a there's a book I read, I, I forgot the exact term for it, but in, um, in neuroscience, there's actually a term, it's like, it's called like priming or something like that. But basically, if we tell our brain or if we tell our, our, our mind, like, Hey, I want to do this thing. Our mind will like start coming up with solutions. Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We should try that. So I remember I, I read it in a book. I think it was the the happiness hypothesis, or something like that. The guy talks about it, and I was like, I was like, oh, that's like an interesting concept. Uh, concept. So I think to myself, being limitless is really like getting rid of those internal beliefs, and it's okay. Like I have. I have some like just thoughts come up in my head. I don't even call them beliefs, but like I have thoughts come up in my head and like I don't engage with them. You know what I mean? I almost think about it as like there's a there's a person who will just like talk and then yeah, it's like yeah. I don't have to listen. I don't have to engage. I don't have to like make it bigger than it is. I could just say, all right, well, I like let's say, for example, I have a client who's late on a payment instead of freaking out and being like, oh, well, maybe this is happening. And da, 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 I'm like, OK, the thoughts might come up but I'm not going to like push it further by being like engaging in those thoughts and engaging in, Oh, what could happen? What, what about this? What about that? Whatever. I'm just like, everything is what it is. And I believe being limitless is kind of looking at things like that. Like things are what they are, but 
even though they are what they are, we could take it to that next level by using creativity, by, you know, getting excited about life. I remember um, I had, uh, I remember I was just like, I read, I read this book on the law of attraction and I was, uh, yeah. I was like, oh, like, I want to get a client who uh, pays me to like travel somewhere. And like, no joke, I think it was like a month later, a client hit me up and they were like, they were like, um, hey, uh, I'm currently living in Europe. And this was the guy I knew two years ago, but he had success with the business. I moved, oh, to, wow. he moved to Bali, but then he sent me a message. He was like, he was like, hey man, um, I'm living in Europe right now. He's like, I'd love to have you uh, come along and shoot some videos with me while I'm here. So I went and lived with the, that guy for uh, two months. That was back in uh, 2018, I believe. And oh, uh, wow. literally wow. like, uh, like it must've been like a week or like a month before that. I was like, I want to have a client who pays me to travel. And so obviously we could say, you know, um, yeah, well, it would have happened anyways. But like at the same time, I've had multiple times in my life where I've purposely like put the intention out there. And it's almost like it's almost like a loose uh, connection with our environment where it's like if I believe that, you know, something is possible, then the world will be like, OK, well, here's like a little taste of that or like, here's, oh, wow. here's <laughs> that, you know, so I've had a lot of times where that happens. And I think that um being positive and just being creative and, and believing that anything can happen, like those kind of things. And then putting intentions out, like for me, you know, I want to have a client who pays me to travel or like, I want to pay, I want to get a client this year who pays me like this much amount of money and whatever. And like getting those clients, I feel like doing it so many times now, I believe in it. You know what I mean? Wow. So I, wow. I think being limitless is really like believing in like, I can put my mind to anything and those things could, uh, could come into fruition. You know what I mean? Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your insights and amazing conversation, Kyle. Thank you for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you for listening to episode 61, Managing Your Inner Dialogue with Kyle Turner. <laughs>